Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and yes, it is my face. I'm going to be trying to do intros and outros in person now, because for one, like, it's more personal, like, from me to you, you know, it's more in person, so we're gonna try that. Secondly, it's gonna help me build up my confidence with staring at a camera and just being in front of a camera, because looking at a lens is just a very weird concept, but like, I'm not looking at a lens, I'm looking at you. So it's just gonna take me some time to get used to so please bear with me through all the weirdness that I do <laughs> But also that's just my nature so you know also get used to the weirdness <laughs> But in today's video we are going to be making Momo from the last airbender And you know who Momo from the last airbender is right? You're not over there googling Who Momo from the last airbender is right? Because if you are you can go in time out You can go in time out right now and consider your life choices if you don't know who Momo is. Because Momo is the most adorable thing in existence. How dare you not know who Momo is. But for those who do know, yes, I'm going to be making Momo today. I made Appa a few years ago and it just seemed like a really good time to finally make Momo. I mean, for one, Avatar is having like a resurgence even though I'm late to that whole shenanigan, but it's having a research and so it's just about time that we make Momo. But before we get into that, let me just do a little little self-pluggy plugs if you let me. If you end up liking this video at the end, why not give it a like? And if you so desire and you think I might be down for this kind of content, maybe drop a subscribe. And then, you know, if you're like, God, I love this girl's face. That's just a weird sentence to say. <laughs> if you do though, and you want to watch me stream live, I stream on Twitch. So if you want to see me make my art live, or you want to see me scream my head off at a horror of a game because I made horrible life choices, that is also a thing you can do too. I will leave all my socials, all the information down in the description. So also, I, I I'll leave all the dis uh, <laughs> I will leave all the links in the description of everything I use to make an art doll. So if you want to know, everything down there. Okay, now let's get started. All right, as usual, the first step is to sculpt the head and feet. Well, in this case, just the head. Um, I always start with a lump of aluminum foil that I kind of squish into the rough head shape that I'm going for. This is done for a few reasons. First, it's going to help keep the head as light as possible so it's less likely for the final piece to just like flop over from the weight of the head. So, you know, we always want to take care of that. Secondly, it's going to help make the clay bake more evenly in the oven since once again it's not as thick so it's going to bake more evenly and have a less likely chance of it cracking. Fill in the rough head shape that I'm going for. I then cover it in a thin-ish layer of clay. And once I have that clay on there I can start pushing it around and get the general shapes that I'm going for. It's very important to always make sure you're looking at your um, sculpture from all different angles just to make sure everything is as even as possible. So you know looking at from the top view to make sure like one cheek isn't bigger than the other or like your nose isn't misshapen or like the forehead doesn't have a dent in it because these are all things that are common and it happens all the time. I do it. So that's why it's always important to make Make sure you're looking at it from all different angles so that way you can always um, add clay where it needs to be and we know another way to tell if the clay needs to be where it needs to be is with references because as I always say say it with me folks references people references references will always help you level up your art to a new uh, you know a new level <laughs> But there's just no downside to references. They will always help you just get that extra either realism or help you find that inspiration you were looking for. There's just no downside. It's a great arsenal. It's my number one tip. Always have references. So in this case, I got a ton of Momo. I got a ton of references because it is very difficult to not only take a 2D drawing or animation and then put it into a 3D space like Momo because he's drawn in 2D so trying to do him in 3D was very difficult from the get-go and then I you know I have my own style so I can't I can't make it as like exactly picture perfect of the movie so I have to understand that I want it to be as close as possible but it's still going to be within my level so you know just understanding that is really going to help me as long as I don't get Momo looking like this as long as he doesn't look like that and he looks closer to this, I'm a happy camper. 
that movie should just burn. <laughs> At this point in this sculpture, it was very clear that the eye size I chose just wasn't going to work for the Momo size head I was trying to go for. So this is actually a perfect opportunity to show you guys how I make my eyes because it's not that difficult at all and I just never had an opportunity to show you, but now I do. So I have this photo paper that I bought from an Etsy seller and I'll link it down in the description so if you guys want it, you guys can get it as well. And all I do is I take a little bit of UV resin and I stick the glass eye on top of it and then I cure the UV resin with a black light which is or you can cure it in the sun that's another option as well but I just use a black light because it's a lot faster and just like that I have an eye now you can always paint these but I will never be able to keep them even <laughs> so I just use um, printed out eyes on photo paper and just um, glue the glass cabochon eyes onto that and you can already tell with that eye size it just it fits the face a lot better and Momo got some googly bubbly eyes so <laughs> it just it works a lot better having me go up a size um, for his eyes and it was just an also great opportunity to show you guys just a little quick snippet of how I do it and so now it's back to normal sculpting also you know let's I don't know why I have like one random purple painted nail. Uh, I think I was messing around with nail polish when I was cleaning and I was just like, ooh, what color is this? And I painted my nail purple, so I got one purple nail. Normally I don't paint my nails because they just don't last while I'm making art dolls. Either I end up painting over it and it messes it up or it just chips to to hell and I just never I never mess with it because then it just looks bad so you know what let's just see how long this nail lasts because I don't know if it's gonna make it to the whole thing but you know we'll just see how long this nail polish lasts you go little nail I believe in you Even though I ended up just furring the face with fake fur, I still wanted to show you guys footage of when I thought I was going to texture the piece and how I do my textured fur. Um, something you always want to keep in mind is fur direction. So you never want to um, sculpt the fur just going in one direction the entire um, piece because that's not really how fur looks. If you look at pictures of dogs, cats, or any animal that you're working on, you'll notice that the fur changes direction slightly depending on where it is. So you'll notice that 
it might swoop down on the side of the muzzle or it'll swoop up towards the middle in the middle of the muzzle or it'll swoop downwards around the eyes and go towards the back there's just little nuances like that that can really level up your sculpture when you're sculpting um it's just really little details to pay attention to that'll really help you when you're sculpting so i just wanted to drop that in a little bit Once the clay head is all nice and baked and I've made the armature, it's time to build up the body. And to do this, I use quilt batting. Quilt batting comes in these really long sheets that's pretty much readily available anywhere, like all craft stores sell it, even Walmart sells it. And I just cut it into long strips and then I wrap it around the body over and over and over again until it's built up to how I want. Now something to keep in mind is that when you're doing this step, you always want to make sure you don't build up quite as much as you actually want the end result of the body to look because whatever fabric you're going to use especially if it's fur is going to add a bit of thickness to it so you want to make sure that you're not making it quite as um big as you actually want the doll to be because then when you add the fur you're going to be like oh crap this boy dubby thick <laughs> but like i always say if you want that chunk 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 boy you go ahead and you go get that chunky chunk chunk boy if you want little thin 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 boy you go get little thin 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 boy <laughs> okay we like all shapes and sizes here <laughs> but momo is a very lanky lemur type creature so i want to make sure that i'm not going really heavy on the quilt batting at all just keep it nice and thin he, he a thin little lanky boy <laughs> And after that, it is now time to cut out the fabric for his body. And to do this, I just cut a piece of faux fur the entire length of the doll. And then I cut little slits, like I'll line the fabric up against the body and I'll cut little slits where I want the um, limbs to go through. And then I'll just push the limbs through that. And then I'll trim it so it's nice and snug around the body and then just sew straight down the middle. This, like I always say, it's really hard to explain in words what I'm doing. So I'm hoping the footage just helps explain it a little bit better because if I just said that to somebody they're gonna be like what <laughs> so I'm hoping that the footage helps a little bit it explains just a little bit better than than words do here <laughs> Hey, hey you, 
We're now doing these in person. This is your daily reminder that if you've been thinking of doing something, but you've been in your head about it saying that, oh, I can't do this, or I'm not skilled enough for this, or I don't have the time for this, or I da 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 no. You stop that right now, okay? Because I believe in you, okay? You can totally go do the thing. Like, this is like a 30 minute long video. While this video is playing, go start that project, even go plan that project or whatever task that you've been putting off that you really wanna do, either start planning it, either work on it while you're watching this video, just get the ball rolling because I believe in you. And I know the first step is always the hardest. So, you know, if you need somebody to talk to about it in the, you know, come in the comments, we'll all chat with you, I'll chat with you. We'll, we'll figure it out, all right? So that being said, go do the thing. I believe in you, I got you. All right, back, back, back to the video. The limbs are treated the exact same way as I do the main body. I'll line up the limb and cut a piece of fabric the entire length of that limb and then I'll just trim it so it's nice and snug and I'll um, sew starting from the feet or hand in this case and then working my way up towards the body and to join the uh, leg and body fabric together I will use a ladder stitch.
Once the body is all sewn up, it is time to do a little bit of trimming. Now, I didn't do it too much for Momo, just because the fur was already pretty short to begin with. I just mostly did it to shape him a little bit better. You know, make sure you could see all his elbow joints and knee joints and things like that. But for that, I do a combination of scissors and a pet shaver. Pet shavers are really great to get all the bulk fur off very quickly, especially on longer style furs. If you want to cut a lot down, it, it works wonderfully because it gets it all off very fast it gets it all off smoothly and not like all jagged and stuff so it works wonders but scissors are really great for when you really need to get into that detail trimming so when you really want a, a knee like in this case I did it to have the knees pop out more I trim with the scissors to help shape the fur to have the um, elbow joints really pop out so that it doesn't look like he has a noodle arm it looks like he actually has like maybe bones in there that are moving him <laughs> so um, I just use a combination of those with every single doll that I trim up that's what I do Once all the trimming is done, it is now time to paint Momo. Now, again, I ended up furring his face, but I still want to leave all this footage in just in case that you guys don't fur your face and you need to paint your textured pieces. And so I always do a base coat of a darker paint than what I actually want to go for because I'm going to go back and dry brush lighter. And what that means is I'm just going to take a bit of lighter paint and I'm going to wipe off most of it off of the paintbrush and then I'm going to lightly brush it over the top of the sculpture and that is going to bring out all the details that we put into the sculpture. It's going to help uh, make them pop more against the darker background. And you always want to just go little by little by little. So you always do like a little bit lighter and then you go a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter until you get to the lightness that you actually want. So I kept going back and forth even off camera to make sure that it was the lightness that I actually wanted. But again, I ended up furring his face so you know it didn't really matter. <laughs> and don't worry about his eyes because you're like oh my god what did you do to his eyes? No, it's very, it's quite easy and satisfying to get that stuff to come off. But before I do that, I never show you guys how I varnish my pieces and I just always forget to and you guys are like why don't you varnish? I do. This is my matte varnish that I'm using. I used way too much. Let me tell you, don't use that much. I went a little too heavy. Uh, handed right there but th yes this is me varnishing my pieces I just use a matte um, sealant to get them all nice and nice and nice and good looking but here I am taking off all the paint that I got onto the glass eyes and all I do is you can take a toothpick or a needle and I just I you don't scratch like directly like uh, parallel to the eye because that'll create scratches in the glass but I just scrape sideways onto the eye and it gets all the paint to come right off it's very satisfying to look at and it's very satisfying to do so I'm not gonna I'm gonna be honest I paint over the eyes when I'm painting just so I can do this later because I like it <laughs> We are home stretched now. The last step to do is to airbrush all his markings onto this white body, which was the scariest step for me because he was a pure white body and I had to airbrush a lot of brown. <laughs> but we just took it like I did. I took my own advice. I was staring at it for so long. It was just like, just go for it, Karen. Just go for it. You can do it. You can do it. Just go for it. So I just went for it. <laughs> so here I am airbrushing. Um, a lot of people always ask, does airbrushing make the fur crunchy and does it make it textured? It really just depends on how you're airbrushing. If you're um, being heavy handed or if you're being light, if you're brushing in between each layer of your airbrushing, you know, those are all things to pay attention to. As long as you're brushing between each layer and you're not going too heavy handed and you're not doing too dark of a color on too light of a color, you're going to be fine. 
it's just it takes airbrushing takes a lot of practice and another method to do if you don't have an airbrush like I know that's an expensive tool to have especially if you're only going to be doing like one or two art dolls as like a fun hobby um you can take watered down acrylics and dye the fur that way you just have to make sure you really want to keep an eye on it and make sure you're brushing it out as it dries just to keep the softness of the fur as close as you can possibly have it to the original but um airbrush just makes your life easier you can cover a lot more ground you can be a lot more even with your your um um spraying and and just your color distribution A airbrushing is just the bee's knees so <laughs> i'll always recommend airbrushing if you have the money for it and if you think you're going to be making more than one art doll but yeah i just go back and forth because i i'm kind of going against my own advice and and airbrushing a dark color on a white background but because I know what I'm doing with airbrushes, I kind of know how to deal with it. And so I'm just making sure I'm brushing and spreading out the paint with a paper towel to make sure it's all being evenly distributed. And so um, it turned out completely fine. I was scared the entire time, but it turned out fine. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, don't miss spray, please. <laughs> I don't want to have to resell this thing if I get brown where I'm not supposed to. But you know, we're, we're good. We're good. We ended up being fine. And so the last step right now is to sculpt, I mean not sculpt, uh, airbrush his little stripes in his ears. And that is the final step. We are on the home stretch. I just... This guy, I put him off for so long because I was so scared of messing him up. And he did look weird to me for a while, but he ended up looking totally fine. And that's just a testament to always being like, just go for it. I know, like, like trust the process. That That is the definition of trust the process because I was really worried, but we got there in the end. And so he ends up looking absolutely adorable. So I hope you enjoy him too. <laughs> shoulder looking as cute as can be here i'll boop his nose for you <laughs> but thank you so much for watching this video i really appreciate it especially since it's one of the more lengthy ones so thank you if you guys did end up enjoying it you know maybe drop a like drop a sub we don't force here so do whatever you want i just hope you enjoyed it either way thank you for taking the time to sit here and watch it um again all my socials are going to be down in the description and if any of you guys are interested to see any other art i make or if you're interested in buying something i do sell my pieces so chances are something might be available in the shop that you might like go check it out maybe who knows but i'm gonna try to be on a schedule guys we gonna try. I got, I'm already filming the next video, so maybe in two weeks you'll see a video, but I'm never holding any promises anymore because I'm all over the place. But thank you so much for sticking with me. I appreciate you. All right. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.